It's episode 296 of The Platformers, a show about games and nerd culture. And I am your host, Brian Barnett. I am the long quiet Chris Cornelius, aka Delphi. Oh. And I'm Will Berger. What's up? And I'm the shambling mound. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you threw me with that one, Chris. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, it's currently my Discord status, which it has been since uh the time of said game, which you know yes. my my friend who I streamed it for also changed their name to um the shifting mound to suit. So yeah, there you yeah. go. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that in a second. So since the last time we recorded, uh, a couple of things have happened. One, the Game Awards happened, which, you know, quote unquote, gaming's biggest night. I guess we'll get we'll we'll determine whether that is accurate or not. Uh, we're also going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about Venba. We're going to talk about um a little bit of Jedi Survivor. We're going to talk about. Uh, I finished Slay the Princess. Hey, as did I. So and we're gonna, definitely be talking about that one. And we're going to talk about a couple other things. Um, Chris, what else? What else did you have that we have uh, on the menu this evening? Uh, I can touch on initial thoughts of Rogue Trader, and that's about it. Really, a lot of it has just been, again, Slay the Princess. That and yeah, um, lots and lots and lots of Heroes of the Storm. I've spent a, a lot, actually a disproportionate amount of my time this week was spent on D&D and building a dungeon crawl, scrapping a dungeon crawl, rebuilding a dungeon crawl, etc. So nice. DM duties and all that. But uh, yeah. Nice. And then, uh, Will, what did you have that you want to talk uh, about this week? I attended a Monster Hunter Now event a couple weeks ago, so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about uh, my... My little thing that I did while I was at TGAs, um, I'm going to talk about, uh, I can talk about Alan Wake 2 a little bit, uh, if people would like to hear about that. I'm not finished with it yet. And I can talk about, um, that might be it, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I played a little bit of Alan Wake 1 as well, but I'm still very, very early. I'm just like on the ferry outside of bright falls or whatever it's called i forget what it's bright called falls. not twin peaks. twin peaks we getting a pixelated will burger up in this up in this b does that happen for you as well chris it is but at the moment uh my internet is also going so i have no idea what's causing this right now so. oh no, no. You both are everything's just breaking i'm hearing i'm hearing robot voices all across the board what is going on oh no, no. no. Not really sure what's going on, but we will not through, I guess. All right, all right, all right. Hold steady. Hold. Hold. Yeah, a bunch of programs that are running in the background to try to make things better. As am I. That seems to be working. I did all. I'm. A, I'm a professional, so I did all of that before we started recording. <laughs> okay. Well, I usually get that. And yeah, I usually do that and it normally works and now it didn't. So that's I'm okay. Not right I, I'm not, I'm not supremely professional. I'm still on Wi-Fi because we still can't get a contractor out to fix this internet, but you know, whatever. Anyways, where shall we begin? Shall we let, you know what? Let's wrap up stuff that we were talking about previously. So why don't we start uh, with Slay the Princess? Let's do that, yes. So, uh, you had already started it last time. I know Lucas had implied to have finished a run through, mm -hmm. and then I had not started. I have since gone through and hit credits, basically. Yes, so and I have as well. Why don't you, yeah, so why don't you open up? Because I think you went back and did extra endings and such as well, uh, which I yes. have to do. Yes, I've done, I've done a couple of endings, um, hilariously i thought that i had seen everything and then i looked at the number of achievements that there are in this game and there are so many things that i did not see uh um, yeah yeah that was it for me as well and i was just like man i really want to play more but i can't do it now because i have a lot of things that i want to get to before the game of the year episode which is not a problem that most people will have but that you know 
And that's like, you know, I do this show and that's, that's part of the, uh, that's part of the thing. So yeah, I, I, I like to get on... through as much as I can. So I'm yeah. right there with you, but I plan mm. on going back, uh, and playing more later just because I really enjoyed this. Uh, that will also be a theme of another, uh, another game that we will get into later, although not nearly to the degree of this one, but, um, yeah, it slay the princess. Like we said last week is a game that is best. Uh, it is best if you don't read anything about it. If you don't look at anything about it, if you just play it and that is still true. Uh, in fact, it might even be more true than last time. Uh, but I will also say that I think one of the best things that this game has going for it is its creative writing. I really think that the, the, the voice acting in this game is, I think, supported by only two characters. Uh, I checked the credits. There are only two. Yeah. You got the the male and the female voice yeah, actors which are and is, they cover such a range like i was astonished to hit the credits and realize there's only two it's you're kidding me it's really impressive Not. yeah it's really really impressive and the writing also holds that up uh and is brought to bear quite well the art it, like the whoever does the art uh for this game also does a great job creating like you know evocative um scenes and character designs and things for like a wide range of of you know emotions and topics and things like this i i i am incredibly impressed with this uh so i did i have not written up my review on backlogged yet um but this i i'm i'm not sure whether this is going to get my third perfect score of the year or whether it's going to get like more the first two just shy of that uh the first two uh one i will get to later uh and the first, oh i know what it is and the first yep. one is uh, uh oh frick it's not goodbye volcano high it's uh cosmic uh, wheel did you give it to that cosmic or? wheel cosmic wheel sisterhood got a perfect score yep uh well, although there are several that got like close to that, um, for me so far, uh, and th- so yeah, for for both Slay the Princess and Cocoon, I'm like, honestly, I I would feel comfortable giving both of these a perfect score. I just don't know that I'm going to. If that I, when when you do reviews as long as I've done them, you just kind of have like an instinct and a feeling of like like th- there is like a feeling of like a nine there is a feeling of a 10 there is a feeling of a seven like there's just you can just play something and then you just have that feeling that just wells up within you and you just kind of know what it is now that has not the vibe always, the vibe that has not always borne out because uh you know as i've said numerous times before there was there was one particular review that i did for dan stapleton at ign who's a great editor and I had the number and then I had the text of my review. And he said, like, these don't match. Like, I, I feel like you are giving it, you're being harsher with the score than you are with your, you know, text, somewhat glowing praise of this, like, you know, and then I, I had to like read through it and I was like, actually, you're right. That does read like a different number than I gave it. And I adjusted it to, to match. Um, because the text was how I felt, you know, but it's not often that those two things disagree. Uh, but sometimes it it can be like a culmination of, of all of the parts. Um, you know what? Fuck it. I I cannot believe I'm doing this. I, I'm, I'm giving Slay the Princess a perfect score. Catch the fever. People. You're you're sitting there hesitating over it. I have no hesitation. This is my front runner for game of the year. Yeah, this is the one I was waiting for. It's like uh, you know, rather than sitting there grudgingly going, I guess Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, but it's like no, no, no. This is unequivocally. This is my pick. Yeah, currently. So um, 
And yeah, you know what? I guess I got to get on this shit. And you, and you know what I'm going to say? I'm just going to go ahead and give a perfect score to Cocoon as well because I I I my my main frustration with that with that game was that I got stuck a couple of times. And like Skill if issue. I would have sat with it, maybe that would have been fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Quite possibly. But yeah, the, a lot of it is just, you know, ref, time and reflection does help with this kind of stuff. Like the, in both cases, it's like, you know, there's games where I thought, wow, that was really good. And then, you know, come back three months later and realize I haven't thought about the damn thing ever since. It's like, well, can I really call it that great then? Or And this you know, is, that... yeah, uh, so I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, it's, it's fine. Um, that's basically it. Yeah, go for it. And that is is one of the things... And I want this to carry forward into our game of the year discussion because, you know, in the coming weeks, like we are prepping, we are in the final stages of preparing for our game of the year episode, which is going to be going live in January. Um, and the, the, the focal point that I want a lot of times game of the year discussions can kind of be like taking the temperature of the year and just being like, what's the most hype or things like that. I kind of want to leave in a bit of a different direction. Uh, we've always kind of done things a little bit differently uh, here at the platformers. And I, and I guess I can't really say we, because this will be your guys's first game of the year episode as hosts on the show. Uh, you know, that's, that's a failing of the platformers to be honest. I'm well, out of you know, <laughs> there you For go. what it's worth, it's a similar style to what I would normally do anyway. So, you know, yeah, yeah. My, yeah it's very similar to the past up. podcasts I've been on. So yeah, I'm but comfy. One one thing, one thing that I've always stro- strove to do uh, previous is striven, strove, striven, which is strove, guilty stri- geared, yep, strived, yep. you know, strived. We've always strived. We have always strived. Uh, but did you exod? That's the question, bro. I've, I've been at this I, game dude, for I'm, a I'm long revving, ass I'm, fucking time. I'm, I'm revving up. <laughs> I'm revving up. Uh, anyways, but for. My reloads sharp. Yeah. And that's before you even add R to the mix. Mm. Uh, but a, a few years ago, I introduced the heart pick and then we had two categories. We had the critics pick and the heart pick, the critics pick being the most perfect game, the game with the fewest flaws and the heart pick typically being something that really speaks to us personally. Um, but even though it is flawed, it has higher highs or more resonant themes or it even just is really trying something, even if it whiffs on occasion. And what I want to go into this game of the year episode uh, looking at is what games do we think we will look back on and will stand the test of time to the highest degree. I'm not in particular interested in like, what's the flavor of the year. I'm more interested in like, what is going to what are the games that we think are special enough that like these will remain special in the future? You know? Yeah. What things will you be able to revisit at any point in the future and will remain powerful experiences? And I, I really want to give top priority to those sorts of games. And frankly, I don't care what your budget is. I don't care how many people made it. I just want to see that resonant stuff. Resonant evil. <laughs> anyways but yeah so that's that's and that's going to be a theme and slay the princess i i do think is one of those types of games and very much so i I think think that uh if you have not played it uh fix that so yeah highly recommended to just about anyone and the more savvy you are the more familiar you are with writing and games in writing in games as well will actually probably help because it's like it preempts questions you may have given the scenario it's like well what would i do in this scenario and it's like here's a question where you can ask that and kind of plays with that so it's like yeah it accounts for savviness it doesn't assume you know no knowledge or no meta awareness or anything like that and plays with it really well so that was a very pleasant surprise for me frankly so yeah yeah highly highly recommended yeah had like, a blast like with lucas i definitely played it in like two sessions um and i yeah it's it's real good like just just yeah. buy it don't like literally don't even look don't don't even look at like the art of the game like just literally just buy it and boot it up 
Yeah, as blind as you can be going into it, uh, it will serve better for sure. Yeah. But anyways, that's that's really all I have to say about it. Uh, it is gonna be awesome, uh, and yeah, I I don't really have anything else to say about it because I don't I I just want you guys to all experience it. So yeah, agreed, definitely. <sighs> all right, with the, now the the full throated endorsement of Slay the Princess out of the way, the obligatory. Uh, what should we talk about next? Should we should we get into the game awards? Should we get into you know what, Will? It's been a minute since you've been on the show. Why don't we why don't we go where you want to go next? I'm talking about the game awards. Yeah, I was don't. there. I was in the flesh. Yeah. I was there. I was there when Jeff Keeley unzipped Hideo Kojima's fly and just <laughs> it's went unspeakable to town. things. You guys didn't see it because it wasn't on the stream, but let me tell you. Let me tell you. The sounds, the slurping, the smackering that will haunt your nightmares mm. for all time. Ooh, can there I are have... things a man should not have to see can in I, public. Can I have just a smackerel? <laughs> just, just, just a small amount of yeah, you know, little, little bit of tongue, a little bit of tongue. Um, anyway, as a treat, yeah, yeah. Game Wars was good, except I don't know. <laughs> it was a fun experience. I will say that. I don't know how good i thought the show was uh i think you know i'm sure my compunctions with it are better said by a thousand people on twitter about hey man you should let the devs talk hey yeah. man like yeah. it'd be cool if everything wasn't a fucking commercial hey man why does hideo kojima get to come up on stage reveal 30 seconds of people looking at a camera and then you suck his dick for 10 minutes like why is that and then yeah, you try to like kicking off the devs and award winners and such with like yeah why 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 are you telling Ag and Numa to wrap it up please like, also also the dev who was up there trying to dedicate this award to team members that had died yeah like it, it was a bad look um yeah that was um that was Larian in fact I believe so yeah so I will say so so first of all you were like well why were you at the game awards. Well, I can talk about it now. Um, I can't tell you much. I can say that there was a Tekken 8 preview event in LA a couple days beforehand. And your boy was there. Uh, and you can read my full thoughts on IGN tomorrow, December 12th. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun going and meeting a lot of people that I had not previously met, but like knew like your Discord or on Twitter. Uh you know, shout outs, you know who you are, Kai, Jesse Vitale, a bunch of people, right? Um, Moises Traveris over at um, over at Paste, a bunch of people. Garrett Martin also over at Paste. Uh, so it was really cool to, to meet all those people and, and got to shake Sam Lake's hand. That was neat. Um, you know, so very cool experience. But I think, like, I'm of the opinion that the Game Awards has been deeply flawed for as long as it's existed. And, like, if you're just coming to this conclusion, I don't know where you've been, but... yeah. It ain't great, yeah. people, and I don't want to belabor the point, but like, man, we could do better. Maybe we should all be watching Dice. I have. There has been a call to to watch the Dice Awards and to watch some other things like that that are more internal, that are more academic in their awards. Um, and I think that we could, you know, it, it's it's like watching. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it's like or the Baftas or something. You yeah, know, it's like it's like there are more. Um, There I'm are not sure. I'm not sure how to phrase this without better, having to come across. The, they better represent the state of gaming, the state of games, the celebration thereof, of, and of the developments, achievements, and such, compared to the Game Awards, generally yeah. speaking. Yeah, you know, with respect to the Keelys, right? Like they do a they do a good job of like getting a lot of I call it the Keelys. They get a lot of eyes on stuff, and you know, it's nice that people are getting awarded, but. Uh, one of the things that like kind of summed up the whole night for me was like Armored Core 6, which is a really great game. Uh, and you'll hear about it from me on our Game of the Year podcast. One best action game, deservedly. And it was announced basically with Joff Keighley staring at a camera and nobody from From got to come up and talk about it or accept the award. And they kind of fired through a bunch of them in quick succession. Yeah, a bunch of, a bunch of them. But like even if you're doing that for like 
you know, I get it for like the smaller stuff, right? Maybe like we, it's just for our content stuff. creators. Yeah, yeah, like know, the content yeah. creator maybe isn't there, you know, that Best I understand. Sports event. Yeah, like it's, you know, unless somebody oh, from- hey, here we have to talk about this. We have the Evo building to talk about, to talk to you about this. Right, yeah, I mean- We have a random person who was working on the infrastructure at Riot Games, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, that that I get. There's a random furry that was at Evo. Admittedly, the fact it's that Evo doesn't- not the one you'd want. Well, no. It's not Sonic Fox, oh no. Evo should win each and every year, frankly, because um, it's an open tournament that anybody can go to. And you show and me a league- are immaculate, yeah. Yeah, and you show me a League of Legends bracket that runs 7,000 people. Yeah. But the point being was- it's really just a shame and but also like as someone who is there like observing just kind of impassively and being like okay let's see what i was a pack building and the people who were there and cheering for their game their favorite game it was loud so clearly it you know appeals to a decent chunk of the audience but i do think it's sad that we're not treating the people who make those games with more respect yeah that's all i have I to say on that yeah I think that's why, in general, there's just a lot more negativity this year. It's not that the Game Awards themselves have changed particularly. Again, they're just continuing the onward trajectory that they've had the entire time they've run. Yeah, they're just tweaked just, by volume. Yeah, it's mostly just the state of the industry, the massive amounts of layoffs, the real world, you know, beyond the scope of video games, political conflicts and everything that else is going on. And the fact that people would like that reflected and addressed in some way by the big institutions and they did it's not. It's just not happening. And, yeah. And yeah. they weren't and going to. Like, we, anyone was crazy to think otherwise, but like it would have been nice. But no one was shocked that Keeley said nothing of it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the funny part was, right, like, Brian, before you, is like, if we're talking about like trailers that released that week, Rockstar ate their lunch. Yeah. Because yep. it's Rockstar, and they have fuck you money. They have we can spend a billion dollars to make the prettiest hair you've ever seen, and also like, not to go on to the GTA trailer, but like as someone who lived in Florida for fifteen years, the most accurate representation of Florida I think I've ever seen in about a minute and a half. Yeah, Florida man, the game. Like props Everything to Rockstar. You know about Florida is true. Everything that you see in that trailer is true. Everything. That's Florida, baby. Anyway, yeah, Brian. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say I I understand like I it at, as a person who lives on Earth right now, it really sucks that a people group and their history is being systematically destroyed. Like, it and really sucks to watch. And and it, the cowardice around it, you know. And oh yeah. I understand if people don't want that to be on the game awards because it's, it is impacting a lot of people who were there, but it's not directly relevant to the game awards. Now, you know, what is directly relevant to the game awards is the every fucking week layoffs of game developers and stuff like that. So like, I find it more understandable that people didn't, even though the future class signed a, open letter about it and wanted it addressed like you should talk about the fact that they all want it addressed and stuff but also like i i didn't see a single mention of like the dire state of the games industry you know on this night and you know if if people want this to be a place for positivity and stuff where like we can escape from thinking about that shit for like five minutes or four and a half hours or however long the show is like I am sympathetic to that. Um, and I don't, I don't, it sucks. It really sucks. Yeah. The number and, is in something like 65 to seven or no, 6,500 to 7,000 this year in software development in yeah. games and such. And yeah, you know, there's been more since that time. So yeah. And that's just in development. There. That's not impressed. Like press is having its yeah. own, like apocalypse. we're having our own struggles going on with you know ai is cutting into that pretty bad as you would expect and so. you know just particular groups of people that continue to be generally shitty towards all of our friends and the greater industry who shall go unnamed 
But, you know, it's worth noting that they fired another one of our friends today. They did. And as someone who's been fired, you know, I'd like to say, A, that sucks, and B, it's the best thing that ever happened in my career. Thank you. I write for IGN now. Appreciate it. But, anyways. So that sucks. But, all of that said, let's talk about some takeaways from the stuff that was revealed. Because I will say, I will say, I infer, I did not see the Guilty Gear leaks. I went out of my way to not look at them. And I did kind of infer from the way that some people I know who are known specific character enthusiasts, I kind of inferred what was coming. But I was still very pleased to see Elfelt return to uh, to Guilty Gear. I wasn't. Yeah. But I'm glad that... I, listen, anybody who played Exert is not happy to have that character back unless you played her in Exert. But she's so toned down. Like. Scars. Scars run deep. This is true. Listen, man, I got hurt too many times. I had to fucking hold the Pineberry mix more times than I could count. Yeah. Well, now it's very reactable and mashable and she can't just do it. Anyways, we're, we're not here to talk about Elfelt, but she is cool and I did play with her and she is fun. And all Good that theme sort of song. Stuff. Yes, uh, I have had that theme song stuck in my head ever since she came out. But uh, Turns out Guilty Gear Strive has really good music. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thought? Not me. But I will also say I was very, very excited that the first two announcements during the opening of the show were Pony Island 2 and Rise of the Golden Idol. I'm amped because Spider of Lanka is also one of the best games that I played this year, which is the DLC for The Curse of the Golden Idol, which is the first game from that developer. So... Uh, that's I've awesome. had nothing but glowing things. I have not got around to it yet, but I have played the first Pony Island and loved it. So yeah. half the reason I had my eye on inscription is, you know, the pedigree of that dev and like, yep, this is good. I yeah. Yeah. I'm amped. I'm amped. Still need to play the hex though. That was the one in between it and inscription. But uh Oh, I yeah. did I did not know about that. I'll need to do that. That's Daniel Mullins. Uh yes, he really, really yeah. Yeah, the hex came out a couple of years before like right in between as you would expect but uh yeah i heard very good things but i just didn't get around to it myself so yeah and then uh you know i know i don't i don't know will if we talked about this on this show or we talked about it elsewhere the the kind of bizarre uh dare i say it <laughs> ludo narrative dissonance of adding a roguelite mode into the last of us <laughs> But, These are not serious people, Brian. But, I mean, I will say, I I really do enjoy the gameplay in The Last of Us Part 2. I think it is vastly improved over the first game. And so, I, I understand from a mechanical point of, of view, but like also like... Way to spit the, on your messaging yeah. so hard. Yeah, it I feel like... Already conflicting in the first place. Which is also funny because like, I... There's... there's not Not to get back into the like... The never ending Is- Israel Palestine thing. But like also I have heard that the last of us, particularly the last of us part two is an allegory for the Israel Palestine stuff. And not a favorable one as the reading goes. Well, but like I, th- that's kind of the thing where it's just like, okay, Neil Druckmann has posted like an Israeli flag and you know said that he stands with israel which like has certain meanings and then has like a second level of meaning but he's from there so you can at least understand that but at the same time you gotta be willing to you know like when australia does something dumb i call out australia yeah well and it's also it's also one thing to like stand with your country when it is attacked it is another thing to stand with your country when it's like carrying out an extermination of a people group and it's like so the timing i don't know the timing on that but that is very important but also like if that is an allegory for that conflict i don't see a i i don't see a way to read that game such that it's pro israel if that makes sense and i don't know chris if you've played the last of us part two i know will hasn't 
but I, I have not, but I've studied it extensively. Okay. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't understand like if that's supposed to be an allegory for that. I, I, I literally don't understand how there would be any reading that wasn't like pro Palestinians out of it. It's very, it's very strange. So it's like, it's not, I, I, I'm not, I'm not totally ready to throw Neil under the bus because I that's don't. That's something I would have to do more research and actually like read yeah. articles and such on. Although so I know that a lot of people that. are super prepared to do that right now. Uh, but anyways, all of that to say, we got one of Sony's first party games that has a roguelike mode that actually makes a lot more sense than this, than that one. And that is God of War. Now I'm not a huge fan of God of War Ragnarok, but they did. I saw somebody post, they did find a way to fit, uh, into a Norse game, both the words Ragnarok and Valhalla into the title. So kudos the writers over at Sony, they're doing the Lord's work. They have there. done it. They have, they have achieved, They've achieved peak Norse. Yeah. Yes. But anyways, uh, we had that, we had a uh, big walk by house house. I don't know if either of you are, are fans of untitled goose game, but this game looked like goofy fun with friends. Uh, I like the little, almost like claymation ducks just walking around the world. That looks pretty chill. Uh, house house does good work i i am curious to see uh we also had uh we also had nakamura come back um showing her new studio unseen Mm. and the kimuri game Mm. uh which looked pretty cool to me um i liked that we also got uh the next game from uh ori's moon studios which is no rest for the wicked which i thought was really beautiful and looked cool yeah yeah Definitely leaning into the moon style there for sure, although yep. apparently much darker in tone and looks it. So, yeah, I thought that was great, and that's a top-down action game if I recall correctly, which is like I'm I'm big into. So hopefully that I believe so feels good to play. Um, and then I only had three more that I took a note of that I thought were were cool that I'm excited about. We had uh, Tales of Kinzera Zhao, which is the the one that the guy was saying he was dedicating to his to his uh, father who had passed, um, which I thought looked pretty cool. Another action game. Then we had the next thing from, uh, uh, arcane studios. This time arcade Leon is going to take their stab at the vampire formula and make a blade game. Which looks pretty oh, that's, cool. Oh, that's then. No, oh, Ooh, now I'm more interested. Yeah. <laughs> And then, then again, there... I'm the decline of Arcane Studios is well known even before Redfall. So yeah, this is I true. Hope this is true. Deathloop was not was not uh, dishonored. Didn't do it. Didn't do it for me. Started strong, ended really poorly. Yeah. Although I liked it overall, I liked it more than I didn't like it. And then there was one. I thought this was interesting. I'm curious as a as a uh, fellow retired dnf dual player will i was interested to see what you thought of the first berserker kazan i thought this it could be kinda, neat i thought this looked kind of interesting actually yeah it could be neat um i'm anxious to see more of it you know i i, I don't know if it, action games are tough because like i feel like you have to play them to really understand what they're about yeah and um, how they feel is like the most important, important thing, thing and you thing. can't see that in a trailer yeah, you know, like, listen, Team Ninja said Rise of the Ronin's coming out soon. I'm like, I trust Team Ninja to make an action game that feels good. Yeah. But, you know, other stuff, it's like, I'm going to, you need to, I need a little, I need a little bit more info. I need, uh, I need a little bit more. So yeah. I think it looks cool, you know, but who knows? Yeah. And then, uh. We got, we, you know, we, we um, alluded to it earlier, but also Kojima's next project, uh, OD, which he's teaming up with Jordan Peele to do, which is pretty cool. I like Jordan Peele. Mm-hmm. I like the way he thinks. I like the stuff he does. And uh, I am also a known, t- at least two out of three of the people on this, uh, on this episode right now are known Kojima enjoyers. Might be three out of three. Yeah who, yeah, who can say? Who can say? 
So there we go. Three out of three. So I, I'm generally here for whatever Kojima's cooking. And this looks like it may draw inspiration from PT. I don't know. I don't know. Could be. We'll see. Uh, Chris, what what stood out to you? Was there anything that you that you were really digging that you saw? Uh, let's just go right to the end then. Um, you had me with new Monster Hunter game. I'm like, yep, I'm in. Yeah, I want to see Hunter that. Wilds, yeah. Mm-hmm. Although the the most hilarious thing about that was what happened in the stock market immediately after. Yep. Because yeah, that was uh, fun. so for those who who are aware, the the trailer started. New Monster Hunter game, Capcom's share price spiked. End of trailer said 2025, plummet. Five minutes span, hilarious. Yeah. Very yeah, funny. Ways off, but looks cool. And I'm usually down to Hun Mon, so yeah. Yeah. Nice. What, I'm excited. To what uh, what stuck out for you? Uh, you know, as weird as it says, so I mentioned Rise of the Run earlier. I think this game's going to be sick. I completely trust Team Ninja to make an action game that feels good. Uh, I thought Blade looked cool. I'm excited for more Kojima stuff, even though we know next to nothing about it, other than yeah. like, wow, those are really pretty virtual people looking at a camera. Um, and Udo Kier is going to be in it. You know, it's yeah. like you know what? You know what? Honestly, low key was like one of my favorite things. What? When Sega was like, we're making a new Jet Set Radio, we're yes, making a new yeah. Shinobi, we're making a new Golden Street, Axe, we're making Streets, Streets of Rage, Rage, and we're making Crazy Taxi. Like, hell yes, yeah. brother. That was Tap great. into that stuff. You have it, you may as well use it. You will use it. Yeah. As someone who, like, the, you guys may not be able to see this, but if you look, there's a Dreamcast right there. Yeah. That was my it's favorite right console. Yeah. More of that shit. Incredibly underrated and ahead of its time, for sure. Yeah, you know, also, uh, the other thing that really kind of, I was surprised. Um, I thought that Skull and Bones looked interesting. I did not expect it. Uh, and uh, Hellblade, new Hellblade, looks cool. Um, but Skull and Bones, I was surprised. Like, that game has kind of become a meme about, like, man, you shouldn't have taken that Singapore money, huh? But, yeah. uh, but uh, like, when they showed it, I was like, oh, that could be fun, actually, right? And then uh, I think um, Hellblade is going to be awesome. I've been waiting for that yeah. for a long time. So all of that First plus one, a new Monster Hunter, yeah. yeah. And, and it is you know there was some there was some interesting announcements. It was funny because a lot of people you know pre pre show were like, "What do you think the last thing of the show was going to be?" And there had been a rumor going around at like the press parties uh, while I was there that is going to be Monster Hunter, and nobody was sh- like a hundred percent positive, but like I had it on several good authorities that that's what it was, and so I was just sitting there like. And then the trailer started playing, and I was like, "Yeah, they were right." Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we. Did, I mean, we did it's get... to be expected, right? Like the the last content drop for Rise Sunbreak has already happened. You know that we know that they're kind of in two teams, and people are saying like the Rise team and the Worlds team. You know, they're about due for that. I don't know how true that is, or if they are just the same team. But yeah. now is the time. Now it seems like the time, and the time frame lines up. So yep, seems right. Yeah. I also thought it was it was interesting. We got we saw a lot more of Metaphor Re Fantasio, which is shaping up yeah. to look real yeah. good. Um, we also got uh, Usual June from Finji, which I thought looks cool. I must have missed the reveal of the finals. Uh, That's been uh, there were previews and such of that a while back, and like betas and such. I, mm-hmm. A couple of my friends, uh, local friends, have been playing and saying. Really good things about it. I saw a preview on, um, I think it was Skill Up's channel a while back, which mm. had my attention. So the game is a known quantity, but I think they just kind of dropped it at the time and said, it's out now and okay. all, uh, about to be out. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, we also we also got... Cued uh, that up to install later. We also got Windblown from Motion Twin, although that was more of like a tone piece trailer than anything else. Um, I think, I don't really recall seeing gameplay for that game i don't recall no. but i think that i think that recently i did not think this originally but i think that dead cells now feels pretty good like i i jumped back in with the castlevania update and i think that game is way better than it was at launch so like you know i respect that yeah also it's, I, it's I like been shuffled so. a lot but it's good it's very good yeah uh mm. and i think that was basically it i was hanging out with my brother-in-law at the time and he freaked out uh with the world of goo 2 reveal because he's he was a big fan of the original yeah that's that's surprising um i am only vaguely i'm familiar with the first but haven't played it 
Yeah. But uh, it's kind of surprising that it's like well over a decade, I think, and suddenly they're dropping this. So yeah, yeah, neat, awesome. Hope it's good. Hope it's everything people want. Yeah, and then uh, the Dragon Ball Budokai game got its name, which is Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And then that's pretty much it, I think. They had like a couple of other games, but nothing that really kind of jumped out. There was a lot. There's there's a lot. But that was what spoke to me. So, and, uh, you know, it, it is nice to hear that people there at the event were having a good time. That's always nice. I know that being there live, like for announcements and stuff or for tournaments and things is always like just generally more enjoyable than watching it online. In the same way that watching an event live is different than watching it later on VOD. So, but yeah. Any last things about uh, the game awards that you wanted to talk about? Will, or is that pretty much it? No, I think uh, I I will say one thing. I think, it's like the vibe of it. You know, if someone comes out of that show and says like, I had a really great time. Like I don't blame them for it because the vibe of it is very enjoyable. Nice. Like if you see it live. So oh, after a while I was like, man, I went sitting for a hot minute. Like <laughs> Jeff, I'm going to need you to wrap this up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> da, but... da, 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 da. Somebody should play him off the stage. But anyway, yep. uh, it was, it was fun. You know, it was uh, not something I would feel the need to do every year, but it's also like a great opportunity to meet people. So I had a good time. Yeah. The the Tekken event was better. <clears throat> I mean, you got to play some games. No bias you? or so. anything. Listen, I can't, I can't talk about anything until tomorrow. Look, it's not, <laughs> it's not well, a my sure nature. Be sure to check out that preview. I, yeah, you know, like, Tit up IGN tomorrow, uh, but look, I had well, a... it's not in my nature to be mysterious. But I can't talk about it, and I can't talk about why. Yeah, I just I can't I can't tell you about it. You know, like I can't. Man, listen, I signed a night in DA that was like three or four pages long. I didn't read the whole thing. I ain't talking about. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was it was a good experience. Nice. Good stuff. All right. What? Next, I got a game I want to talk about, and I know oh. you guys got some stuff as well. What's up? Let me talk about the other event I went to. All right. On behalf of this very podcast. Indeed. Please. Yay, yeah. Verily. So a couple weeks ago, I was in New York City for a Monster Hunter Now preview event for their new season. Um, we hung out at this very cool Japanese restaurant and played a bunch of Monster Hunter Now. Uh, thank you to Martin Van Lommel for the invite. I had a great time. Um Culminations of the Frost is the new season, which launched four days ago. Uh, it adds a couple of new weapons. You get the lances and the dual blades. I feel like the lances were a little like slow and not super fun, but I really like the dual blades. And they added a bunch of new monsters. Um, probably Radabon is the most well-known of those, uh, but also like Zenogre, Bamburo, Baryoff. So you got a lot of new monsters to fight. And they also added this really neat... Uh, basically chain hunting series of things which is neat um so it was very very cool and uh if you like monster hunter now if you're like me um i really highly recommend checking out the uh the new update and uh, it's very fun it's very fun nice so i don't know i i was talking about it and uh like that is my before bed game. Like if I'm, you know, if I don't get to hang around and uh, like walk around and see stuff, um, you know, we have a, it's a good like hang out, like kill Kong monsters go to bed. And I, weirdly enough, I didn't expect this, but I think it's probably one of my favorite games this year. So props to the monster hunter now team. Nice. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Uh, Chris, did you have any games that you wanted to talk about before I get into my next one? Um, ooh, da, 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 da. I've dabbled in a few games, mostly just started. But um, th- again, as usual, the vast majority of my time this week was just Heroes of the Storm. And then, you know, other things. Slay the Princess was a big standout feature. But uh, I have picked up and started uh, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. 
mm. the new CRPG by uh, Alcat Games, who did the Pathfinder games previously. And um, I am about four hours of playtime, according to Steam. And I'm still in the extended tutorial area, and there was a lot of time spent in character creation because that system is incredibly mechanically dense, as you might expect. It's from the Pathfinder guys, and even though it's using the, um, well, the Rogue Trader uh, rule set from the similar named uh, tabletop game, but uh, there's a lot to go through, a lot to learn, a lot to figure out, and just go, I don't know what works and such, and yeah, a lot of it carries over decently from other CRPGs and such, but was figuring out that and then just picking my way through it so early days hard to say for sure how it'll end how big it is how you know faithful and everything it will be to 40k and such but that setting is ridiculous and usually a good time so so far so good i'll nice. keep you posted nice sounds good all right i'm gonna go into venba next yes please do so I, on Saturday, actually on the night of the Game Awards, um, I was supposed to go to uh, a pre-wedding ceremony. Uh, it was going to be an Indian wedding uh, from a mutual friend uh, and actually between two friends that, uh, that Audrey, Audrey's co-workers uh, that we've known for some years now. Um, finally getting married and it was great and it was awesome. And I was not able to go to the before wedding event where, you know, people were getting henna, like in all sorts of things like that. There was like a huge extended ceremony that was like five hours long. And it was awesome. Uh, according to Audrey, I was not able to go because I had some family stuff that I had to take care of, unfortunately, but I was able to go to the wedding and uh, that was also an all-day affair. And if you've ever been to an Indian wedding, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a huge celebration. There's the wedding ceremony, which is also like full of all kinds of rituals and things. Uh, and then there is a huge reception, you know, where you've got, depending on who you are, like traditional Indian fair and those sorts of things. And then obviously like, club style dancing and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, I got moves that I got to let out. So, you know, I'm going to be there for that. Will knows we've been dancing together, but anyways, I do. so between the actual wedding ceremony in the morning and the huge reception that lasted basically the rest of the day, I had like an hour and a half to two hours. And, I'd had this game that I was planning to get to, and I was like, what better day to play a game about an Indian family who relocates to Canada and is rediscovering their love for these different types of things through cooking when I'm with a huge group of Indian people that I love and we're also talking about food and eating food and all sorts of stuff like that. So it really was just the perfect day for me to do this. Uh, and it's on Game Pass. I jumped into it. The game is like between one and two hours. It does not overstay its welcome. Um, and so I played like the first half of it that day uh, before I had to like go back uh, for the big reception. Uh, and it is so damn charming. It is so endearing. Uh, it is gorgeous. It is absolutely beautiful. The sound design, like, you know, stuff sizzling on the on the stove and all these sorts of things, throwing in different ingredients and having it, like, you know, pop or all these sorts of things. If you're adding, like, you know, seeds, you're, you're adding cardamom and all sorts of stuff to it, you know, the, the little slap of dropping bay leaves into something. It's, it's awesome. And they, they run you through all of these things and you, you actually can get like real ass cooking tips from playing this game, which I thought was pretty funny. Also because and I told Will about this because we hang out all the time. You guys should be jealous. Uh, but incredibly, they, they really should be, to be honest. Keep going, but, Brian. But, uh, I, I'm, I am picking up the cooking responsibilities in my house uh, starting in like two days. So I, 
know how to cook a small uh, number of things, but I'm also like gonna really branch out and expand and learn. This is a skill that like I, I have a little bit, but I haven't developed it. I haven't explored the space and stuff like that. So playing this game from that perspective as somebody who's like really excited to like find out, can I make like roti prada or Szechuan chicken like I used to have when I was growing up? Like, can I make curry? And like small, like little loaves of bread, like I had growing up. Like, can I, can I recreate some of my favorite dishes that I've had as I lived all, all across the world? And like having, you know, I haven't had all of the dishes that they made in Ven, but, but living in Southeast Asia, you do have a lot of access to Indian food. And like, I definitely know the smell of this as somebody who like, I've had Indian friends growing up my whole life. And like going over to their house and having their parents cook and having that, like just that smell hanging in the air. Like it was very nostalgic for me uh, to play this game. And it's also uh, about uh, a mother and father and their relationship with their young son, uh, which is, uh, you know, I don't have a young son, but I do have a young child and having that, that relationship be very central to how my wife and I talk to each other and the way that we do things in the kitchen and our child's relationship with food and how that um, compares and often contrasts with what I want or what my wife wants. Like there's a lot going on with this game. Um, it has uh, some powerful things to say and it says them all incredibly deftly because as I said, it's between one and two hours. It does not have a lot of time. Yeah, to, it's like a movie runtime yeah. kind of thing. It's it's really uh, really fantastic and uh, probably not surprising from how I've been talking about it. This is the other game that gets a perfect score from me. Uh, this is a ten out of ten. I'm going to read you my my backlogged review. This is the only game this year that made me openly weep. Um, I, I don't love the term ugly cry because I think that it's kind of like, I don't know. It, Negative it can, connotations. It's, yeah. It's a, it's a powerful thing when it happens and it doesn't happen that often. But when I, I played this and my wife was sitting next to me and there was one line, uh, right before the end of the game that just broke me in half. Uh, and I may not like the term ugly cry, but it is definitely appropriate for what was going on. Uh, and my wife just held me for a while. And then I talked about why uh, I felt that way. It just, it, it, it invoked something that my grandfather did with me and something that my father did with me and something that I do with my daughter. And in this moment, it was... It was reminding me of the humanity that exists in these small moments that sometimes we don't think about until it's too late. And uh, anyways, to, to get back to that, um, I said, it's an incredible game that blends the difficulties of relocating without losing your culture the often difficult dynamic between parent and child and the emotions, both positive and negative that can come with cooking traditional dishes for both your family and for yourself. Uh, it is a truly special game and, uh, it will, it, if you're noticing a theme, it will definitely be returning, uh, for a special appearance on the game of the year episode. Um, Hell yeah. and I, and I am, I am more, confused than ever at what game is actually going to get my game of the year award because there are so many and uh and you know we talk a lot about wanting games that are made to a point and for a reason and uh being glad for the you know representation that these games get and i was happy to see that Venba was nominated for Games for Impact. Um, I was sad it didn't win, but, you know, there's more than one way I can't say whether or not, uh, I believe it was Chia to Chia. Yeah, I have not, played, I have not played that one. Yeah, so I, I haven't played that, it. so I can't really speak to it. But, yeah. you know, I understand. Yeah. 
But anyways, it's on Game Pass. It's very short. It's incredibly beautiful. I highly, I, I, I can't, I can't recommend it any more highly than I already have. Catch the fever. And somebody actually catches a fever in this game. So there you go. There you go. It just writes itself, everybody. It does. It really does. Well, good stuff. What next? Will, you got something else or was that it? I've been playing some Alan Wake too. Alan Wake. So I played, I, so I started playing Alan Wake one because I'm trying to make this Alan Wake two thing happen. Considering that I already bought it. I bought it when it was dis when it was discounted. It was like 33 bucks on the Epic game store for black Friday or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was like for a brand new game in this economy. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? And so I bought it. That price in front of my salad. And <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> I wonder how many but people yeah. are going to get that reference. It gets thrown around a lot in my uh, Warcraft raid group. So it's very it good. Kind of sticks with me. It's very good. And I like it. But anyways, uh, so I, I started playing this because I already had it. I feel like it was in like some giveaway on GOG or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so I already had that, but my brother-in-law had Alan Wake remastered for the PS5. And that shit looks real good. So I think I'm just going to redo that intro and just play it on PS5. Um, but then I, I was curious because Quill made this, made this comment about like, you got to play this. You got to play American Nightmare. You got to play Control in the DLC. I've already done Control in the DLC, so I got that one. And I know we've talked about this as well. And I know you're not like all the way through. But does that does that seem like overkill, or does that seem like these people have been hungry to make this story for so long, and they want to tie everything in because they have a great love for this? Uh, I mean, I think definitely Remedy has been wanting to make this for a very long time. Like, they've, they've gone through several versions of this game before this is the one that finally released. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think you need to play American Nightmare. I think you can read a summary. I think you can watch a video. I don't think you need to specifically play it. Alan Wake 1, I think you got to play. Okay. American Nightmare is like, this is kind of important, but yeah. you don't need it. Um, it's the same way that, like, Playing Control will help you. You don't necessarily need to know everything about Control to understand what's going on in Alan Wake 2. Yeah. I've seen uh, little nods to it just from footage I've seen of Alan Wake 2 without having played it myself, but just recognizing, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, there was a guy on stage at, at the Game Awards where I was like, wait, what the? I know you. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know. And I have no idea how they're connected with this, but we're going to find yeah. out. So I think, you know, I don't think you necessarily need to do it. What I think Alan Wake 2 is doing that's really cool is I think it's like it is an extremely like postmodern meta narrative game um, in like a, a really impressive way that is also like very OK with embracing being a video game and a lot of like stories that take themselves very seriously in this medium are like kind of ashamed of the fact that they're a video game. And uh you know, they, I, love I, it. they embrace I, it. They love it. I actually talked to Sam Lake about this very briefly, and I was like, you know, I think that's pretty rare. But um, like, it, it it is very proud of what it is, and it's very interested in using the things that it is to make a point. Uh, and it's kitschy, and it's weird, and it's pulpy, and it's extremely smart. I mean, it it kind of defies categorization. Like, this is a a game that only Remedy could make after this much time you know, with like this much love for the property. And I think it's really special. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait. I've got a preview draft that I'm, that I'm sending in tomorrow. And then I basically have to decide whether I'm going to be doing Alan Wake stuff or trying to get to the end of Baldur's Gate three, because I've pretty much done everything I want to do. And I, I kind of want to hit the Alan Wake thing hard. So, and I know that I have like basically like 30 hours of stuff to get through. Cause I've got like, eight hours ish. I'm just going to like, I'm, I'm mainlining all of these games that I'm going to be playing. Like, I'm just, I'm not going to do any extra like side content. I'm just going to like get to the end. Probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much side stuff I, there I'd is say, in like Alan Wake or whatever, but 
I'd say, you know, as much as I get that, I at least try to approach them somewhat holistically. So it's like, yeah, if the if a side quest or side path, you know, does catch my attention, I will see it through and follow through. So, but yeah, yeah. I, yeah. That's just a yeah. complete random tangent. Again, I have no idea how relevant that is for Alan Wake 2 or anything like that. But it's uh, definitely relevant for Baldur's Gate 3. I wouldn't sit there and, you know, be methodical about that if you do go back to it, because you gods. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's uh, that it's super good. This is an interesting thing where, like, I know that Alan Wake kind of... It seems like there might be a little bit of revisionist history going on with the first Alan Wake, where, like, I feel like it didn't really make waves at the time, but, like, I'm talking to people now who are like, what are you talking about? Alan Wake is great, you know? And now, yeah. granted, I have different friends now than when it first came out, so... You know, I, I think it was a few things. Like, as someone who bought that game at release, uh, my collector's edition is still over there somewhere. Um, like, I thought it was special out of the gate, but it also re- released on the same day as Red Dead Redemption 1. Uh, that'll do that'll it. i kill it, yeah. That was... I was a the horizon problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Just taken to, like, the nth degree, but... Yeah. It is really fun to see, like, have seen that game go from, like, very realistically, like, a cult classic to, like, very beloved... Um, because it deserves it. It's a great game. Yeah. I think not, more uh, people go back to it either who did previously, you know, bounce off or just missed it at the time have gone back and gone, oh, yeah, no, this is pretty good. So it's definitely kind of built up in acclaim and um, regard over time, I think, for sure. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm 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 uh, excited to experience it for myself, particularly. I'm not, I'm not particularly excited to play the first Alan Wake, but like I'm just doing it because like. I need to for context, but I am excited to play the second one. Um, I intend to go through them both at some point as well. So here's hoping. But yeah. Oh man. That's about all I've got. Are we actually going to surprisingly? Yeah. We've, we've been moving through this pretty briskly, mainly because, you know, we could sit here and gush about say the princess all we want, but like, I don't want to do that in front of a camera right now. Not unless it's like a full spoiler cast. And yeah. Such. Yeah. Needs... Please don't. I haven't played it yet. Yeah. It needs yeah, to exactly. be a situation for, for where... your benefit more than anything else. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it needs to be a situation where Chris and I just hop on a call. And then only if we decide we're not going to do a spoiler cast for this game or like just yeah. pretty whole... much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I very much want to play it. Um, but I, I yeah, feel I like I very like... much want you to play it. So <laughs> yeah. Like this year has been crazy for indie games, but also very difficult to keep up with stuff. Yeah. There's so much. There's just so much. It's it is actually bonkers. I've been like sitting here looking at like the stuff I've been working on this year and the stuff that I've played or the stuff that I reviewed or the stuff that like I was doing for the platformers. And it's just it is insane. We know we still have to talk about um El Paso elsewhere. Yep. I still have to uh play Check My Showdown, which is this really cool fighting game that I've wanted to play for a little bit that I have a key for. Like it's just it's crazy. Like it's impossible to keep up with. There's so much. We're yeah. at the point where we just have to accept we can't play everything. Not yeah. just new, but you know, especially if we want to go back and touch stuff we missed. It's like not to mention all the comfort games and such, and just the length of time it takes to commit to a game compared to reading a book or watching a movie or anything like that. It's like, yeah that's the reality of the situation and yeah probably ties into why you know really good like games criticism and journalism and such is so hard and so rare it's because it's it's to become an expert and this is nigh impossible we just haven't had the time yeah i I, uh i was thinking about this recently where a friend of mine was talking to me and he was like you know you can be an expert in film realistically in like two years if you commit to watching a movie a day every day for two years you You'll have seen have watched hundred like what seven hundred and three hundred sixty five, eight hundred films. Yeah, close to no seven hundred like seven hundred thirty. Seven hundred thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is an outrageous number of movies, right? But it's completely doable because most yeah. of them are two hours. Um, whereas, like, if you tried to do that for games, you'd lose your I mind. have that many games over the entire time I've been collecting I've been playing Steam. games. Yeah. Like, and I, I, most of those I have not, you know, finished many of which I will not yeah. for various reasons. It's like, yeah, it's not. Yeah. You know, I, I like, I was looking at my collection the other day and I have a big old, like uh, thousands of physical games, literally. 
Uh, but I haven't played all of them. Yeah, and uh, like some of them, I, I I am sad to say I will probably not get to put in the time that I want to. But like, it is insane to try to keep up with this industry, especially the way that it has been this year. And I'm hoping next year slows down. Like, please, I need time to play Tekken. Like, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but man, it's it's hard, you know. So I don't, you know, I, I if you are, are well read on everything that has been like up for game of the year or like is being talked about in those circles like props to you i don't know how you didn't i'm assuming you didn't sleep yeah um yeah we like I, I, we I, here have all accepted that we will not get to everything yeah and so, especially not to the amount it probably deserves more of and so on i i don't know i do you guys know i imagine i've played more games than anybody here but i don't know that like i i'm looking at my backlog for this year i've played 96 games this year which is normally I would say that's I could probably contest that, but honestly I've just been going. Yeah, I, I've been going back to old favorites and spending so much time on like the long term games. Yeah, that it's hard to say. I haven't gone to as many new things as I might have liked. So yeah, and I definitely yeah. on the want average to play year I probably would have a lot more of these. But also, will World of Horror came out this year? I know, like. It's it's so hard. Like it's you know I think I've beaten like thirty games this year, and I played. I'm sure the number is larger, but I don't imagine it's more than fifty. And part of that is because like you know, I'm working on something. You know, like I, I you know you spend a ton of time doing like coverage on a game. You know, I, I worked on MK for like a month, where I basically didn't play anything but Mortal Kombat, um, which yeah, is fun. I've beaten twenty six games this year. Which is like, like MK one, yeah, it's it's a good game, right? But like yeah. it was also like, man, I want to play Slay the Princess, I want to play El Paso Elsewhere, you know, yeah. I want to play I only two, I want to play uh like a million different things, and we just I just there's no time, you know. I I think there is definitely a good argument to be made for like this being one of one of, if not the best years for video game releases. Because like yeah. there's just an absolute embarrassment of excellent 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 top shelf top tier indie games alone yeah like and then there's diablo 4 street fighter 6 dead space metroid prime uh tears of the kingdom darkest dungeon 2 tears of, the, tears of the kingdom uh for me disgaea 7 Baldur's gate 3 Final Fantasy 16, Sea of Stars, you know, Lies mm-hmm. of P, uh, Spider-Man 2, Mario Wonder, Talos Principle 2, like... The list goes on. Alan and Wake 2. Not yeah, even scratching the surface. It's ridiculous. And like, this is a small... This is just the games that I played. Like, this is... That is just the list of games that are big that are good that I played. There's so much more that I didn't get to. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the, it's the good part about gaming. It's the bad part about gaming. It's like, there's always more, but like you also like, particularly when you do what we do for a living. And then also like for recreation, you know, making shows enthusiasm like and such. Yeah. And stuff yeah. like there, there's, you just can't, you know, it would be one thing if like we weren't making this show and then we could just be like, I'm just going to play, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 as much as I want. And then I'll move on to whatever else. I'll do like however many playthroughs of Slay the Princess that I want or, you know, something else. But Or I'll, or maybe I'll just be playing Diablo 4 with my friends all the time. You yeah. know, or just keep playing fighting games. It's just... Maybe I will play another thousand rounds of Heroes <laughs> of the Storm or however many I've played. Hey, maybe you will though. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Like, maybe you will. That's that sounds so like a that threat. Game. I could, I could, <laughs> si- I could sit here and talk about this game a lot, even yeah. just from what I've played since going back. Because yeah, I, I, I left five years ago, and I missed it during that time. But I didn't intend to come back. And then just on a whim, a friend of mine um, and I, we just jumped back in. And then I've just picked it up as if I never left and have continued to just be it's my go-to game it's like I don't feel like doing anything else I will play Heroes of the Storm I have some time to kill I will play a round of Heroes of the Storm it is consuming me again and it's like yeah crazy yeah yeah and that's on top of everything else I am trying to do for the sake of completion and everything else is like 
can't get everything. We just yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really hard, you know, like it's just, I, I don't know. I, if I can get like, you know, three or four more games this year, I'll be really happy. You know, I want to play Cocoon still. I want to play Venba still. I want to play, uh, you know, the good, news about, two. the good news about those two and Slay is the they're Princess short is they are short. Which sure. is great. Yeah, I finished Slay the Princess in a single like extended sitting, but it was a single session on stream with a friend for like over five hours or so. So, yeah, and you can do the same with Cocoon if you're willing to sit there for a few hours. I yeah, I, I've like, heard it's about five hours long. Yeah, about that's that. about that's about that. And Venba is like real short, so. Yeah, and I've played like the first hour of Cocoon, so I, you know, I can breeze through that pretty easily. Nice, nice. So, cool. Well, n- yeah. Now it's just time for us to, for us to plug away and and just keep preparing for game of the year. I'm amped. It's gonna be a big discussion. It's gonna it be is. Very We're gonna be discussion. there. Yeah. We're breezing through this one today, but there'll be a lot to t- cover on that one. Even there if we just, be. you know, even if we just want to touch on the things that everyone is talking about and the games that we liked and go through why you know this is good this is bad this is why we yeah. didn't pick it or so on there's gonna be a lot to cover, and we're gonna have a fun guest for that one as well no, so you'll have to so. you'll have to tune in to find out who it is anyways unless you me i get to know well, that's that's true that's true uh but yeah all right let's get out of here shall we Yes. Brisk. Nice breezy, breezy. I always say, so this is just a little peek behind the curtain before almost every episode. I'm like, yeah, we can just keep it short if we want to. And it always ends up being maybe even longer than like the regular episode, which are very long. This is the first time in, in, in my very long memory that I said we can keep it short and we actually did keep it short. Mm-hmm. Who'd have thought? Yeah, uh, Cause again, I don't think any of any of us three would have a problem just sitting here and talking shit for random stuff but like yeah we don't need to necessarily keep recording and such so it's very true it's very true we got games to play we got games to play here we go yes well thank you for listening to this episode we really really appreciate you you make all this possible by giving us your ear holes so that we may fill it with delightful words <laughs> anyways we were uh, going so well. We were doing we were so, going well. so well. Where are we? <laughs> no, it's just like, I, you know, the people who are listening to this on audio can't see this, but my eyes just got progressively wider as that <laughs> sentence continued. I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. That chief. one chief. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's my no more listener jutsu. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can check the uh, the the stream live at twitch.tv slash ribnax. Uh, ribnax is uh, uh, R-I-B-N-A-X, and it's where you can find me on a lot of things. It's my Twitter handle. Uh, it is also my backlogged uh, ID, which where I recommend uh, you guys find me so you can see what I'm getting up to and what I really, really like. Um, you can also check me out at Blue Sky at Brian Barnett. Uh, and yeah, check out my, uh, preview for free to play, uh, MMO Terrace land on IGN very soon. Um, and otherwise you can just, I don't know, follow me on Twitter and see what's going on. I'll be talking about stuff or retweeting stuff. I really like beautiful art. So if you like good, nice, crunchy art, then, uh, follow me because I'll help you find a lot of cool stuff. Like some art from hungry clicker. About our girl Elfelt Valentine or Soul Bad Guy or whoever. But uh, yeah, you can check me out there. Uh, Chris, where can everybody find you? Hello, I am Chris Cornelis. You can find me on the internet as Delphia. That's E I, not I E. Uh, and my website is at versus the backlog.com, V S the backlog.com, one word. And I post there intermittently about stuff and things and. Yeah, and then you can find me around the internet on various things. Uh, if you see me on Heroes of the Storm, that's me. Yes, I play too much of that. How about you, Will? You can find me on Twitter at Burger. That's Burger with an O, not a U. You can also find me in Blue Sky at Edgar Allan Bro. I still am getting used to posting there, and I don't do it nearly as much. If you're looking to read my stuff, of which there is much, you can find me on IGN. Check out our new upcoming Tekken thing soon-ish. 
All I can say is, you know, we were there. We saw some stuff. Can't tell you what it was, but we're very excited for that. So please come check that out. I have something I'm really proud of. And, uh, you know, I think that's like probably one of my last things for the year. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, and I have another piece about Grand Theft Auto and satire coming soon at another outlet. So nice. Yeah. No, I want to read that one for sure. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's get out of here. If you like the show, tell somebody about it or write a review. We always love reading the reviews. And if you do write one, we will read it on the show. Um, so that is a threat. Be careful about what you say. <laughs> From everybody here at the platformers, uh, we hope you have a wonderful week and stay safe out there because until next time, we are out. Peace. Peace.